Hello, Scouting families, and greetings from the staff of the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate, Tennessee. Now, you may notice that right now I am wearing a scouting uniform, and that is because I am a scouter with PAC 508 in the Great Smoky Mountain Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And today I am bringing my museum to you because right now you're not able to come to me. I'm going to show you five items from our collection that can help you understand the story of the Civil War and begin an exploration of the past that can actually help you gain a loop. Now, at our uh, museum website and probably shared through your council, you will be able to access a PDF that will help you attain one of the loops related to your cub scouting adventure, whether you are a lion, a tiger, a wolf, a bear, a wee below, or you're working on your arrow of light. So remember to look for those PDFs so that it can help you gain a loop by watching this video and then doing a few fun activities at home too. Now, at museums, we tell stories of the past through objects that we collect. The objects that people once used tell us all sorts of things about them. I mean, think about the things that you owned. If someone looked in your room, they would probably know a lot about your personality and your life just from looking at the things that you surround yourselves with. Now, at museums, we collect objects from the past, which are called artifacts, and then use those artifacts to tell stories about the past and help people understand timelines and also how the past unfolds. So the five items that I have here are about to help you think about the United States Civil War. Now the American Civil War was the deadliest conflict to ever take place uh, in the nation's history. In fact, if you took all of the other world wars combined in United States history, the number of casualties from the American Civil War would still outpace all of those other wars combined. So what are some of the things that make the Civil War so deadly? Well, one of the things is this. This is actually a bullet from the Civil War. And the reason it is so particularly deadly is because that it is a new design. You see, prior to bullets being made like this, they are actually little round balls of lead. But then designers added something in called rifling. That's these twisty shapes that you see right here. And what makes this so particularly deadly is that when it comes out of the rifle, rifling gives rifle the name, it spins it. Now, does anyone out there play football? If you do, you may know that when you throw the football, you put a spin on it. That helps give the football more accuracy. That's what rifling does with this little bullet too. It gives it more accuracy. And because this is made out of a particularly soft lead, when it hits the human body, it might go straight through or it might bounce around and come out through the chest or the neck. So it's one of the things that leads to high casualties during the Civil War. But in actuality, the thing that kills the most people during the Civil War is disease. Uh, things like typhoid, for example, smallpox. Those killed people in high numbers during the Civil War. In fact, it actually claimed Abraham Lincoln's son's life, Willie, in 1862 while he was president in the White House. And it made President Lincoln very sad. Now, this little bullet caused lots of death and destruction during the Civil War. But in order to make it, sometimes soldiers had to use ingenuity. And that's what they use this item right here for. Now, you may look at it at first and think, uh, what is that? Is it pliers? But take a look at our friend again. And then take a look inside. This is actually a mold for a bullet of this type that could be used from pouring soft lead into the mold, putting it together. 
after it is heated and is hot, clamping it together to cool, and then it would release the Civil War bullet. Sometimes when soldiers were cut off from supply lines, they might have to recycle old lead and be left to making their own bullets. That was just one of the hardships that soldiers faced during the Civil War. They also had to face the hardship of finding something to eat. Now, supply lines, in particularly towards the United States Army, sometimes meant that there was good food to eat. But for a lot of soldiers in the Civil War, staples like hardtack and spied meat were a must. And that's because those two foods could travel well. So could dried beans. It wasn't the tastiest thing that ever existed. In fact, hardtack, hardtack was basically like a cracker rock. It was very hard. Soldiers liked to suck on it as they walked and marched. It had salt in it. Very hard to chew. Uh, it could chip your teeth if you weren't careful with it. Soldiers would also dip it into coffee to be able to eat it. And then, of course, there is my favorite the side meat. Now, what you are looking at in this jar right now is actually a 155 year old piece of side meat that was issued during the American Civil War. And for whatever reason, the soldier decided not to eat this particular meat. He'd had it in his pack and it made it home from the war with him. Well, he put it in a jar and decided to save it. And uh, whoosh, it's still uh, holding out okay right now. Uh, it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's looking pretty good for 155 years. Now, one of the reasons this preserves so well, now we've got it in this nicely sealed jar so that you're able to look at it today and it can last another who knows how many years. But one of the reasons it stayed as well as it did was the very thing that it was designed to do. It had tons of salt packed into it so that it could continue to be carried by a soldier for long periods of time and still be safe to eat. Now, would I eat it today? Absolutely not. But it's at least made its way to us so that we can see what it looked like. Now, the next item that I'm going to show you may not be anything that you recognize from today but it was the most important new technological developments of the American Civil War. In fact, where we use emails today, we might say that President Abraham Lincoln used T-mails or telegraph mail. Just before the Civil War began, the first transatlantic cable was sent between Queen Victoria of England and President Buchanan of the United States. But when Abraham Lincoln became president, very soon afterward, the Civil War began. And this little invention right here changed the way that the president would forever be able to keep in track with his generals. You see, Lincoln could go to the nearby war office every day, listen to telegraphs, and he often did. He would go very late at night and he would see the telegraphs come in. Lincoln was very appreciative of technology during the Civil War, especially of the telegraph, which revolutionized the way that he was able to stay in contact with his generals. But you see, it shouldn't surprise us that Abraham Lincoln adopted technology such as the telegraph key so quickly, or actually allowed the first aeronautic corps during American history, which was used to send up hot air balloons to do reconnaissance. He approved that too. And the reason for that is, is that at his heart, not only was Abraham Lincoln a politician, but he had a scientific mind. His favorite books to read were Shakespeare, the Bible, and Euclid. I don't know about you, but I don't always want to sit around reading mathematical books of theory. But Abraham Lincoln loved it. And because of that, he loved to make inventions himself. In fact, he is our only United States president to ever have a patent recorded in the U.S. Patent Office. You see, before he became president, he actually sailed 
flatboats up and down the Mississippi River. And one of the things that he did while running that flatboat up and down, not only in the Mississippi River, but other nearby rivers in Indiana and Illinois, was that sometimes his flatboat would become stuck on shoals. And he hated that. And while he was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, he actually saw a ship get stuck on the shoals, and that made him start thinking. Hmm, I've read this mathematical theory. I've read scientific theory, and I've been on ships. Hmm, I think I have a plan to get ships or boats or flat off of shoals if they become stuck. And so he made a patent for that and registered it. So he registered his invention, making him the first and only president to have an invention. So it's no wonder that he used and loved things like the telegraph key. He was willing to experiment and find out how technology could be of use to him as president. Now, the final item that I have to show you actually has a bit of a sad history. And it is tied to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln is probably best known for signing the Emancipation Proclamation, which was a military order that declared that anyone who was enslaved in territories not held by the U.S. Army during the war would be freed. Now, while that was a proclamation, it didn't actually go into law. In fact, it didn't become law until the 13th Amendment of the United States was put into order and ratified in 1865 but that was encouraged by Lincoln and he signed the 13th Amendment as well after it came over from uh, the Senate and then was passed on to the states to be ratified. But he considered his Emancipation Proclamation to be among the most important things that he did during his presidency. And he believed that it would be the thing he would be remembered for. And it had a personal connection to him as well. Abraham Lincoln came from a family that was, uh, that disapproved of slavery. They were free soilers. They attended a Baptist church that uh, did not approve of slavery and had actually broken off from the larger Baptist church. But when he was a young man, Abraham Lincoln traveled to New Orleans, and while he was there, he saw slave auctions and people who were enslaved. And those individuals were placed in handcuffs, such as the ones that you see here. And he didn't believe that that was right. He didn't believe that a man had the right to tell another man that they could not be free and that they could not receive pay for the work that they did. Seeing those people in chains like these made Abraham Lincoln tell a friend if he ever had the ability to hit that thing on the head, and by that thing he meant slavery, he would do so. And so during his time as president, Abraham Lincoln took the opportunity to take a blow to slavery by signing the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. Now, that was a very short lesson on the American Civil War and my ability to bring it to you to give you a glimpse into understanding the story and the history of the Civil War. If you're interested in the Civil War, there are tons of great books out there that you should check out and look for. Request it uh, right now if you are in Tennessee, for example. Your local library probably has a digital card that you can check out and be able to get your own library books digitally. So consider that and to make certain to pull out the PDFs that I have told you about that can help you gain loops for learning about all these great museum things that you have seen here today. This has been Natalie Sweet for the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum, and I hope that you have a great